we can also adjust the fall off of the snow blending into a rock. And keep in mind that this effect isn't limited to just snow. Uh, you could use moss, you could use sand, you could flip the up vector to the down vector and do something like lava. You, uh, it really opens up the, uh, the doors to get a lot of different uh, effects. So just to continue on to with the demonstration, I could adjust my snow fall off, give it a really sharp blend or something rather soft. And of course, there's always the snow accumulation. Oh, another thing that we have turned off is the normal intensity of our tiling rock map on there. So we could go ahead and turn that up to something like 0.5 or even 1. And you'll see it adds a whole lot of detail to our rock that we didn't have currently. There's also a Fresnel map uh, that uh, is used with the rim light and we can change the color of that if we wanted to. So I'll just show you a quick example of a scene that I made using just this shader and uh, this one static mesh material. And here it is. Uh, the scene is literally just the same mesh rotated and scaled in different, uh, in different ways with some height fog and a, a stock skybox that Epic has uh, in their games directory. And it just goes to show you the, uh, the power of uh, a, a material like this. Uh, another really, really cool thing that we have is, uh, say you do have a snowstorm and uh, you want to offset this vector so it's not just up, but maybe coming from the sides. We have a static switch parameter in here uh, called use with wind direction and speed actor. And if we check this, it's the snow is going to disappear in our material instance editor because it's not getting an input from any wind and speed direction actor. So we have to view the results in real time in our game world. So I have a vector like that set up already. And if I rotate it, I could change where my snow is coming from in the level procedurally. This is really great. Wherever the arrow is coming from, that's the vector that uh, the, the static mesh is going to be using. So it's kind of uh, counterintuitive because it's uh, the opposite of what you'd expect, but it still works rather nice. If I flip it to the underside, we completely get rid of our snow, but we have it on the, the underside of it. This is really cool. It just gives the artist a lot of control and the ability to change things almost instantly in your scene. Another cool thing we have going on is uh, the ability to animate this transition with Kismet and Matinee with the Material Instance uh, actor. So I've already gone and set up a, a demo scene for you here. And I'm just going to come into Kismet and go into my Matinee here. And it completely gets rid of the snow. But if I drag Unreal Matinee into the capture space here, I have some keyframes set up uh, with the snow fall off and the snow accumulation parameters. And if I set the camera up here, if I slide the slider, we can animate snow accumulating on the ground over time. And I could change all this stuff with the curves. I could bring my snow power down a little bit, or snow fall off down. I'll get more of a sharper blend. But if you have a level, uh, you know that the player is going to be on for like 20 minutes or so. You know you can just uh, set your keys up, you know, and extend them really far down the line. 
you know, this is just you know, 25 seconds. But it's still pretty cool seeing uh, the change take effect slowly but surely. And you can have like some snow blowing around and stuff. And it's just a really cool shader. All right, so that's pretty much it for the demo. Uh, thanks a bunch for watching, guys.